We develop, how have we matured, how have we improved since then? Points of remembrance, they are important in human life. Most of us remember our birthday. Some of us remember our anniversary. I'll go from the back so it's not covered. Some of us are being reminded of our anniversary. You know what's next week, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Making many notes, if I just get that. Because we remember these things. And when Jesus was on earth, just before he died, he also set something up to remember. In the scripture that we had today from 1 Corinthians 11, it's written by Paul to a church in Greece, in Corinth. And in it he recalls how Jesus, the evening that he was betrayed, how Jesus took some of the meal that was spread out before them and he took some of that bread and he took some of that juice that was there and he gave it new meaning. And the meaning that he put into these two symbols was to remember him. So he said over the bread, he said this bread that, you know, was sort of like a, like a pancake like a, or like a thick pizza dough. Yeah, like Chicago, deep pan, only without the toppings. And you tear that up and, and, and you distribute it. And he said, just like this bread is being broken, my body will be broken for you. And he took some of the, of the grape juice that was passed over. So this was grape juice that was being served. He took some of that juice and he passed it on to, to the disciples and said, this is like my blood that I will spill for you. And I want you to remember me. I want you to remember me. Why would Jesus set these things up to remember him? Well, I think it's for the same purpose that we remember September 11. Never forget. Because if we forget, then we may be in danger of repeating stuff. The same reason that Germans don't forget, and we can't forget, and we mustn't forget. The same reason that I'm a little frustrated about the former colonial powers having already forgotten the nonsense that they wrecked on, on, on planet Earth and how the Americans, excuse me for, for being blunt here, but you know, American history isn't all nice and rosy. Ask Native Americans. I don't celebrate Columbus Day. You can keep that one. No, it's Indigenous People's Day. I know I don't get an amen for that because amen. most of us weren't here. We are all immigrants. The people that were here, they are not here right now, but we are just immigrants. All of us. I don't care if you coined over, if your grandfather came over on the Mayflower, you were an immigrant. Because there are people on this continent long before the Europeans came. And so, so we, 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 if we don't remember, then we forget. And if we forget, then we are bound to make mistakes. So a German must never be an anti-Semitic person. And if there are people, and there are people in my home country right now who go down that road, and they are justifiably chastised for this, because as a German, you definitely have no right to do that, to say that, to support this. If you are a right-wing German supporter, no, you are, you lost, you haven't learned from your own history. And I can say that because I'm one of them. Germans, not right-wing, German. And I learned from my history. That's why I get upset when I see certain similar phrases being used contemporarily in a country that shall remain nameless. And it reminds me of what happened in 1932 and 1933 in my home country. But because I remember, I am now sensitized to that so it won't repeat itself. At least not here. And I wonder if Jesus set this up because he thought, you know what? Hashtag, never forget. Because if we forget, then maybe we are in danger of going off course. And so there are two quick things I would like to point out in the communion that we don't forget or that we should remember. Number one, who is God? God is the one who sacrificed himself for us. That's in these emblems. The broken body, the spilled blood. That is the symbolism of these two pieces that we serve in communion to remind us who God is. He sacrificed himself for us. That is what is important in communion. And if we don't remember that, if we forget, then we are in danger of getting caught up in all the other stuff. Then suddenly the, the color of the tie I'm wearing for communion 
whether I'm wearing white gloves or not, how the ladies hold this, whether or not somebody's allowed to touch this table, stuff like this becomes important to fall. When really none of this matters. This table is as important as the car that I drove outside to come here this morning, is as important as the pew that you're sitting in, is as important as this fold chair. They serve a purpose, but they are not anything more important than other furniture items in this building. I know I'm stepping on some toes here, and that's good because you've forgotten. If the table becomes more important to you than what's on the table, you've forgotten. You need to remember. It's about Jesus, not about all the other stuff that we build around it. When Jesus celebrated the First Communion, there was no church building. There was no church organization. There were no ordained deacons and ordained elders and an ordained pastor. And only those people were allowed to touch this. None of that existed. We created that. We built it around it. And in the progress of doing so, we may have forgotten. That's why Jesus said, Remember me. So number one, it reminds us who God is, lest we forget. And what is important. But two, I'm closing, and two, it reminds us who we are. Remember Lion King? When he's out there on the looking into the water, and he has an vision on apparition of his dead dad, the Mufasa appears in the sky. Remember me. Wow. I'm not James L. Jones, so <laughs> it's as good as it gets. But it was to remind to remind him who he was. He was the son of a king. He wasn't the third wheel on that interesting, you know, there in, in, anyway. No, he was the son of a king. And communion also reminds us who we are. We are not some, some cellular leftovers on some forgotten planet in some out there solar system circling around in some medium-sized galaxy in this vast universe. No, that's not what we are. We are the beings in this universe that the Creator God looked at when they lived in rebellion and said, I can't let these beings go down into, into destruction without trying at least to save them, without at least giving them the chance to be saved. That's who we are. Communion reminds us that yes, God is who He is, a sacrificing God, but it also reminds us that God looks at us as so important that he did that. Imagine, imagine if the Queen of England 